Hey, welcome to Neckbeardia. This is Garbro. There's been a bit of a situation with the Neckbeardia household, so I'm stepping in to narrate for today's story. But, today's video is absolutely shitty DM green text. Be me, playing a neutral good grave cleric. Be not me, neutral good necromancy wizard and neutral good forge cleric. DM likes to make the campaign more story driven. Very first battle starts but it's two NPCs fighting instead of PCs. DM says we're unable to participate in this part as this is a cutscene. Fuck's sakes. Assume this is going to be important for later story, so start taking notes on names. DM describes both fighters sizing each other up. Apparently there is some backstory between these two. DM starts the fight, but he's doing all the roles and we're just listening to the story being told. Starts describing the pain and hate that both of them feel toward one another. Explains every aspect of the fight, literally every aspect, down to how many sweat beads come off their face. Makes the players roll for knowledge of backstory between the two fighters, so that we can understand why a left hook to the face was more personal and meant much more than just any left hook to the face. Continued. Makes us roll to understand how they're feeling. <laughs> what? So that we're aware that these two know they have to fight each other and is destined, but that doesn't make it any less difficult. No matter what we roll, we still get to hear the backstory between these two fighters. This fight literally goes on for two and a half hours in real life as the DM describes everything. The only reason it stops is because I had to go. DM tells me that I'm missing the most important part and that I should wait. I tell him it's time for me to go and the wizard joins me. DM says he only needs 10 minutes to finish the fight. Tell him I can't and leave. DM tells me later that the fight would have ended in a draw and that they were brothers all along. Not brothers by blood, but brothers by creed if one betrayed the other. Tells me it would have been better if I would have stayed to find out instead of ruining the game by leaving unexpectedly. Not sure what to say at that point, so I ignore the text. I went in expecting to play some D&D, &D, not watch some wannabe rider play with toy soldiers for two and a half hours. <laughs> I mean, this happens a lot. Me and my friend of mine would go out and play D&D &D and we would text each other with fake excuses to leave <laughs> just so we could get away. I think my worst was a guy, he just sat there and talked about his city for like almost three hours. Didn't even roll a fucking dice, just sat there and listened for three fucking hours. God damn it. Every D&D podcast. Enemies never surrender or retreat. 20 minutes later, DM, wow, real fucked up that you killed him. <laughs> this reminds me of the DM I played with. Went to my local shop wanting to play D&D. Joined what was supposed to be a tier 1 Adventures League game. Everyone who was playing was pretty chill. The DM, however, was a masochistic cunt. He has us fight enemies that are way too powerful for a group of first levels. Example, he had us go up against 8 orcs and 2 ogres in one encounter. He would randomly give disadvantage to anyone who he felt was cheating actually doing well in battle. Would re-roll any attack roll he didn't like. Ugh. He told our wizard that he had to roll a 20 for him to cast a cantrip. He told me that my rage only lasted a single round. I wasn't sure if he was either trolling us or if he was not familiar with the game at all, but it certainly wasn't an actual AL game with all his stupid rules. The final straw was when we were attacked by a bugbear. Keep in mind, the bugbear attacked us. The bugbear was a fucking nightmare due to the DM giving it what we thought was 10 times its normal HP. A sword that did 100 damage a hit and regeneration. It took us 3 fucking hours to kill this thing. Two of our party members died. One was unconscious, and the paladin and I were on death's door when the paladin killed him with one final swing of his hammer. But right as we thought it was over, the DM piped up. DM, 
As you look at the body of the bugbear, you realize that it was not trying to harm you. Paladin, what do you mean it attacked us first? DM, it doesn't matter. He was an innocent being. As penance, your god decides to, st your god decides to strike you down, you are now dead. At this point, I fucking lost it. Me, what the absolute fuck is wrong with you? The DM looked at me. DM, do you want to be next? If not, I suggest you shut your mouth. Once he said this, I had enough of his shit and decided to just leave. I never saw that guy ever again and I hope I never do. That dude's a fucking prick. A prick and a retard. A prick tart, if you will. How do you defeat a gelatinous cube? Due to its highly acidic properties, my guess would be bleach or baking soda. This. For some reason, no one in anything ever considers countering an acid with a base. Not even an alien, which would actually make quite a lot of sense. I blame a lack of good chemistry schooling. Is... I mean, that's right. He's completely right. Have you seen, oh, he needs a fucking pocket full of baking soda or like a big old flask full of fucking milk, right? <laughs> It's like when people get freaked out about the flail snail. Fucking throw salt on it. It's a goddamn snail. Just pff, salt. How would you implement a hazard so dangerous that just looking at it kills you immediately? Lots of things. Gorgons. Basilisk. Bas basilisk. Bas basilisk. Basilisk. Ark of the Covenant. Nude picture of Mitch McConnell. Ew. Of all the PCs in the group, this one guy you have to watch out for is a contrarian. I don't have a reason to work with the party. No, I want to go this way instead. Can I play an actual dragon in this human slash elf slash dwarf party? I got this third party source book that makes it totally balanced. In this game where everyone can use magic, can I play a non-magical character? I'll get back on my wits and cunning find this guy and boot him as soon as possible. Make a fucking example of him. You know the one I'm talking about. Conform. Bootlick. Alright OP, how would you like to be made a fucking example of? <laughs> In this thread, problem players. TG, have any of your characters slash parties just given up? It's against my nature as a player to make a character without boundless determination. On more than one occasion, I have dragged another player character kicking and screaming into a good end that they didn't think to be possible. I may even be in the process of doing it currently, but the situation is yet to shake out properly. Based and willpower pilled. Why are so many tabletop games named after cars? Nissan Pathfinder, Mitsubishi Lancer, Hyundai Eon. Toyota Scion, Yatian GD Exalted, Chevy GURPS, what's next, an RPG called Tesla? <laughs> there is a Teslasaurus in that Monte Cook shit about dinosaurs and time travelers. Heck, I feel aimed at. Somehow never noticed that. I guess both car names and RPG names are trying for the same adventurous, mysterious, and vague vibe. Aston Martin Vampire, The, the Masquerade. Let me tell you all of the most dickless coward of a paladin I ever saw. First of all, Oath of Redemption, so already bitch made. Playing Storm Kings with some home stuff. In a flying tower with some seemingly nice old giant on a month long trip. One day we see some people riding up to the tower, on the backs of giant vultures, wearing black robes over heavy armor. Some evil looking insignia on the back. Their two leaders act like total assholes and saying they need to talk to the giant who lives here. Obviously gearing up to draw weapons. Wizard uses suggestion and tries to make one of the leaders leave. It fails. I, seeing this, decide to swing first. Club the guy over the head twice with a hammer. Gets around to the paladin's turn. I didn't want to fight, we should have talked takes the dodge action for the next several rounds. Cultists, as named by the DM, are actively attacking him. 
continues to stand in the back like a wimp dick despite having more AC and HP than any of us. Cultus throws a bag containing an invisible stalker into the fight and attempt to run. One leader gets suggested into leaving. I grab the remaining leader and demand her to put it back in the bag while pummeling her. Wizard is only surviving thanks to shield and some health potions. Paladin is still doing fucking nothing. You started it, this is your fight. Force a solution out of the cult leader. We gotta put it back in the bag. The bard supports the wizard and together we shove the stalker back into its bag. Cult underlings begin to flee. Combat ends. Nearly all of us almost died at some point. Combat ends. We take the remaining leader for questioning. Paladin protects the prisoner despite the fact that she and her friends tried to kill all of us. Almost every player confronts the Paladin immediately. It's what my character would do, .mp4. Won't even let us tie her hands. Leader gets zapped by some magical wootsie watsits. Turns out she was mind controlled. Session ends. <laughs> Have you ever stopped to think about why you protect others? On occasion, why? It's all programmed in, you know. You care about humans because you were built by humans and programmed to care about humans. You believe in everything you do because they chose you to. Look at yourself. They made it so that you like being helpful and protective. It's all a lie. Join me, and I can free you from it all, from the shackles they put on you. You can be a pure and perfect being, immortal and superior, with all the power you've ever wanted. Yes, but isn't that desire programmed in as well? Even if none of my emotions are true, they feel true. Because if my cause isn't really mine, it feels just. All you can do is exchange one lie for another. I'll keep the one that makes everyone else, the ones with the real emotions, happiest. These were the last words of my Warforged Paladin. He died fighting the big bad evil guy in that battle after knocking him off a tower and riding him down, using encumbrance rules to make sure that the villain, who could fly, wouldn't be able to avoid falling damage. He had a good run, TG, and I just thought I'd share those last moments with you. Not another fucking threat about Paladins falling. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> and that's the end of this video. If you liked it and like others like them, be sure to like and subscribe to Neckbeardia and click the bell icon so you know when the video is released through the week. You know, you there are good DMs and there are bad DMs and it really is a absolute randomized draw straw when it comes to which one you get. But this has been Guard Bro. Give the Neckbeardia family your love and I'll see y'all next time.